Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 5, Episode 19, titled Leap of Faith. Before I move on, I just want to point out, the episode numbers might sound like they're out of order to you, because if you look at how it aired on NBC and then The Lost and then Too Little Too Late, is that this would technically be Episode 20, because Free Fall is technically Episode 17. We're counting Free Fall as Episode 21. So if it seems out of order, the episode numbers are out of order, because we're counting it in order it was written. So this is, as we're calling it, Episode 19. Any of you stat nerds, with your black glasses and you want to push them up on your nose and tell us about which episode number this actually is, we know. It originally premiered on June 28, 1989. It is written by Robert Ward, who wrote the last two episodes and Redemption in Blood, Asian Cut, Hard Knocks, and others. This is his last episode. Uh, I feel like there's a of our guest stars, Terry Baines. He's an actor and a director. I feel like he should have got a shot directing this. <laughs> It is directed by Robert Isco. This is the only episode that he directed, but he also directed a presentation of the Academy Awards and something called On Strike for Christmas, which sounds like it stars Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, yeah. All right, John, did a quick peek at this week's music, and I saw someone named Tom Tom, so I'm excited. <laughs> what do you got for us this week? Well, yeah, we have the Tom Tom Club, who, uh, with their song, Kiss Me When I Get Back. They were a new wave band. Actually, they are two of the founding members of the band The Talking Heads. Their husband and wife team, Tina Weymouth and Chris Franz, who were the original bassist and drummer of the band The Talking Heads. So the Talking Heads were actually a, a, a hugely critically acclaimed band in the 80s, and they formed 1975 in New York. The Tom Tom Club was founded in 1981 during one of the Talking Heads breaks. So the band was on hiatus, and they decided to do a side project, and they actually named the club after the music hall in the Bahamas where the band practiced. They had immediate early success in the dance club scene. They had actually go on to release six albums outside of the Tom Tom Club and the Talking Heads. They produced multiple albums for Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers, as well as providing backup vocals for the Gorillaz debut album. Our next artist is Eddie Brinkel and the New Bohemians with their song What I Am. And they're an alt-rock jam band. This was from their album Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars. They were a Texas band formed in the mid-80s. They were actually the New Bohemians at first. <clears throat> they would play the local scene, open for Bo Diddley once, stuff like that. After seeing a, some success locally, they released a couple albums. After the second album, Ghost of a Dog, in 90, uh, Eddie would actually leave the band. The band wouldn't actually last much longer, pretty much fold after that. She was in the band for two albums. She started seeing some success, and then they were doing SNL. She met Paul Simon. They hit it off. She married Paul Simon and went away, and she's still married to Paul Simon, actually, I think. Well, there she, she won out in that one. <laughs> Also, got a little bit into acting around the same time. She had a role as the folk singer in the 1989 Born on the Fourth of July. She actually covers a Bob Dylan song uh, in that movie. Most recently, she's been collaborating with Steve Martin, which uh, if you are aware of Steve Martin, as far as what his stand-up comedy act is that he still goes around and does, it, it largely involves him playing, a, a lot of it playing his banjo. And so she collaborated with Martin on, on one of his albums for that and toured with him a little bit as the most recent thing she's done. He is an amazing banjoist. Yeah. <laughs> is that what you would to it is yeah he has albums <laughs> and stuff he's he has whole concerts just for that oh yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with the comedy yeah he's he does folk, he does folk music yeah he's got like just yeah he's got like 12 album playing like bluegrass banjo uh folk music okay so our last song is this little known band called gnr i don't know what it's abbreviated for yeah I mean, it's for their song paradise city yeah you know it's 1989 it's it's the end of the eighties. Like hair bands, they're just not going to make it anymore. Arena rock, it's just not a thing anymore. Yeah. These guys, I know they think they have these big dreams, but they should just hang it up. So obviously, we are just fun. Guns and Roses, the massive band that they are, 
and their Ooh. song Paradise City. They're a hard rock <laughs> band formed in 1985. So the original lineup, once they released an album, was Axl Rose slash Izzy Stradlin, Duff McKagan, and Steven Adler. Now that's fairly common knowledge if you are into rock music or, or that type of stuff, right? Yeah. I was not aware that the band was born when the two bands, Hollywood Rose and L.A. Guns, merged to form mm. Guns N' Roses. And it was actually because Izzy Stradlin was uh, living with Tracy Guns, and uh, Izzy was in Hollywood Rose. Tracy Guns needed a vocalist, a vocalist for L.A. Guns. And so Izzy recommended Axel. The two bands would merge, and within about a period of six months, most of, and this is where it's, it's a little weird saying that it's a merger of the two bands, because pretty much most of the original members, most of the members from L.A. Guns, who merged in the Hollywood Rose, would immediately be replaced in the first six months by Slash, <laughs> Duff McKagan, and Steven Adler. After replacing them with Slash, McKagan, and Adler, Tracy Guns would quit. So officially, they would be back to being Hollywood Rose, except they just stole their na L.A. Guns name. So now they're Guns and Roses, and Tracy Guns, whose last name's Guns, out of a band. <laughs> they're... One of the biggest bands in the world. They've sold over 100 million records. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2012. And their debut album, debut album, Appetite for Destruction, 1987, that album has sold over 30 million albums, which is the most of a debut album ever. Sweet Child of Mine is their only number one Hot 100, and it's actually off of this, this debut album. Turns out, the story behind that album, it wasn't immediately popular. On their first tour, both the vans they were traveling in would break down on their way to Seattle. They would have to abandon all their gear and hitchhike back to LA. <laughs> Following that, they would record, release their first album, they recorded, and they actually recorded, Life for Destruction, they recorded everything in a month except for Axel's vocals. Which, in Axel Rose fashion, he insisted on recording one line at a time, <laughs> which took forever. <laughs> Why? Why? And then when they released it, Appetite for Destruction lingered for a year, selling very, very, very few albums. It lingered for so long that founder... Geffen Records, David Geffen, personally convinced MTV executives to play Welcome to the Jungle during their after hours rotation to try and sell some records. They would play it once or twice at like the 4 a.m. slot and it would mm. blow up. Their journey from there, so the, despite catapulting to success, they would have to fire Steven Adler at the end of the 80s, which is due to way too much coke and heroin. Guy was just doing way too many drugs. Uh, and he would say, he actually says that they tricked him into giving away his rights, $2,000. But that's not the first time that the band or Axl Rose is going to be accused of this. So the band pretty much spent most of their 90s having to find fill-ins for their shows due to random injuries, people being fired or quitting the band, riots at shows, and just plainly Axl Rose's just bizarre behavior. By 1984, they had released five albums. From 94 to 96, they would sporadically release, and at the same time, Slash would start doing some side project with his side band, Slash's Snake Pit. But there was already major conflict in the band. Axl says that his lack of writing in those years is because of the criticism he was getting from Slash and McKagan and his ex-wife over the stuff he was writing. So, like, Axel doesn't think Slash's stuff is good enough. Slash doesn't think Axel's stuff is good enough. No one's getting along. They would cover the Rolling Stones song, Sympathy for the Devil, to be used in two big films at the time. And then almost immediately after that, Slash would quit the band. Matt S Sorum, who had come in as a replacement for, I believe, Adler, he would be fired, and then McKagan would resign, all between 96 and 97. And each time a member left the band, Axel would just hire a new, a new member to replace them. So the band actually never broke up. Axel just kept replacing people. After Slash and them would leave, after everybody had left, it would come out that the full rights to the band, that Axel had purchased the full rights to the band at the end of 97. Slash sees it differently. Slash claims that the band was forced to sign over their rights 
tickets way back in 92 during a concert in order to get him to go on stage. Like he was refusing to go on stage unless they signed this paper. And so they signed it just to get him to go on stage before a concert. And then years later, when they broke up. He busted up and said, no, 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 I already own your rights. So obviously, legalese ensue. And nothing was ever really reported about how the legalities worked out, but essentially, I'm pretty sure Axel owns the majority of their music. So Axel just continued with Guns N' Roses. He would replace the band members and eventually release Chinese Democracy in 2008. Now think about this. From 97 till 2008 to record one album. And he was recording the whole time. Yeah, I've heard the horror stories about Chinese so yeah, it, democracy. Right, and it is a mess. Guns N' Roses never broke up. They never went away. Axl Rose just took 10 years to make a single freaking album. <laughs> probably doing it one line at a time. Or this time, probably one word at a time. <laughs> Slash would go on to start a band with McKagan and Strandlin called Velvet Revolver. Who would be popular in new enough music that he'd never really have to care about his, losing his rights to Guns N' Roses. Duff McKagan, he also, other than doing Velvet Revolver, he joined Jane's Addiction for a while, as well as his most recent band is a band called Walking Papers, and they're fantastic. You should totally check them out. And Steven Adler, he had a couple side bands himself, but most notably what he's done since being fired is go on Dr. Drew's Celebrity Rehab. He's a mess on there. He's really bad. Like his brain is oh, yeah. bad, mm -hmm. real bad, bad. So yeah, that's pretty much the story of Guns N' Roses. Well, um, John, I would love to continue to talk Guns N' Roses, especially talk about how there's a timeline where Guns N' Roses and ACDC become the same band. But that's a story for a different day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. Because like Guns N' Roses, it's really a one-man show and the one man is crap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on this one. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Check out the website, go with the heat.com. We have two episodes of Miami Vice remaining. Now, it's not all that we have left to go with the heat. We have those two episodes. We have our season five breakdown. We have our Miami Vice as a whole show recap. That means four episodes left of this Go With The Heat podcast before we come to the very end. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Send us some love notes. We take some love. Just was Valentine's Day. We would love to get your love notes. Send it over to GoWithTheHeat at gmail.com. Or you can get us on Twitter. You can get us on Facebook. You can get us on Instagram. Guess what? All at GoWithTheHeat. Check out that website. You can find all the ways to subscribe, all the ways to contact us, and all the ways to support the show. We would love to see your support. We'd love to hear from you. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.